On the last episode of From Start to Finish, we talked a lot about guns. However, there's a few things that I wanted to cover that I didn't have time to. So let's do that now. In this episode, we'll cover things like tracers and bullet hitting walls, getting hit and dying. And just where you're aiming at the camera, and then your gun turns, and over the shoulder. Back again in the editing suite. We're going to start out with the tracer. So let's see, I kind of react right here, so I'll put the tracer a little earlier, because I should take a moment to react. So what I do is I come up here to new, I create a solid, I'll label it tracer, and then I go down to effect, uh, and I'm using Saber from Video Copilot, which is a free plugin. Um, it's really cool for lightsabers and things, but it also works really great for tracers and lasers and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so the link in the description, there should be a link in the description to Saber plugin, so you can use this as well. Uh, so then what I do is I switch the glow color, I bring it over to a kind of orangey color, and I bring it kind of up. So somewhere, somewhere about around here. And then I will take this layer, move this kind of like that, long ways. And then I go to customize a core, and then I take end, uh, end size, and I take this number and I, in this case I'll actually do start size. So it's kind of going from uh, left, left to right. And then I go down here onto this layer, very important, put this to add mode. This will actually show your video again. Uh, so then this tracer I'm imagining is kind of coming from up around here, and then it's kind of coming across my shoulder and kind of around down here, and it's kind of coming closer into the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the toggle switches and modes, and then I'm gonna come up here and press the um, 3D layer, and I'll press R open this panel and then I will kind of twist the Y rotation a bit, kind of do the X rotation a bit, just to kind of tweak it until I get the kind of right angle that I'm looking for. Um, and obviously we'll recolorize it if we're doing lasers. For now I'm just doing uh, like regular bullet tracers. Um, so then what I'm going to do is so I have it come in about here. So I, I trim the tracer so it just starts on this frame. I'm going to hit command and then a right arrow. So I'll move it another two arrows and then I'll do uh, command shift D and that'll cut it and then I'll delete that other new layer. So I'll have this in here and I'll press P, mess with the position and I will put on motion blur as well. Um, and I drag this X tool until it's off frame and then I will Go back and drag this X widget until it's kind of where I want it to be. And I'll go to the next frame. I'm actually going to extend it one more frame out. So it's a three frame sequence. And then you should get this kind of nice streak going by. And then with that, I'm going to delete this set first frame. So it's just on one frame that the tracer is actually there. Because bullets move very fast. And one other thing I like to do is I press T, and then I drop the opacity around to 50. Uh, so now I have a couple sounds in place. Let's just see what this sounds like. Things like tracers. So let's move on to the uh, bullets hitting walls. So I use uh, wall hits from the Action Essentials 2 pack for most of my, well, wall hits, um, or sometimes with trees. And from this particular angle, I'm gonna do side two of this effect. So I'm gonna have it hit right up here in this little bit of shadow just so you can actually see it. And then I'm going to do a time stretch, put this down to 50 so it moves a little bit faster. One trick if you have a lot of movement that I like to use, if you wanna make a good tracking point, find somewhere in your frame, like in this case, there's this nice big board right here. I'll make a, uh, press G, make a mask. Uh, but don't actually hit the math, don't complete it. Just make a line along a surface. 
and then if I'm going to unkey, and then I basically am just realigning it up. So I'm like, oh, well, it's on this line. I know this mask is supposed to be on this particular line along this wall with the shadow. And then that way it helps you hand track it where it's perfectly in the right place, lined up. And then that helps also with like rotation or things like that too. If you don't want to just do it by eye, this helps a lot, especially in a very complicated track with scale rotation. I find that the built-in computer tracker doesn't work very great for very complicated shots, but this is a good way of being able to do it by hand uh, and save a lot of time. And then afterwards I press M and I delete my mask. Go ahead and put on a color correction. Uh, so I'm gonna go up here to color correction, press luminometry color. And then I'm gonna, this wall is pretty warm, so it's the shot, so I'm gonna bring up the temperature quite a lot. And I'm going to bring down the exposure just a bit, try to match it. That way these particles kind of actually look like they're coming off of the wall and it's actually the wall's texture, not some other random uh, comp texture. So if you have concrete or a tree or dirt or whatever it is you're using, make sure that the color matches. And that just depends on your shot. And then finally, I'm going to slap on a motion blur. Um, so we'll see the final effect. And bullet hitting walls. So then for the blood, use a blood mist effect from the Action Essentials pack. So I like to put these on multiply mode just to give it this extra kind of darkness. And then pretty much exactly like the wall thing, I will uh, line up the tracer to hit exactly at the same time that the blood hits. Uh, I'm gonna move the blood to be above the tracer, actually. That way it kinda covers over a bit of the tracer. And then I animate the first couple of frames to line up with the body, but I don't like doing too much animation. And then what I like to do is after a little bit of the effect, I'll take the opacity, make the keyframe, and then I'll lower it so it doesn't take the whole effect. And then I also throw on a motion blur. And in this case, my hand kind of comes up over the blood effect. So what I'm gonna do is press G and I'm going to take a mask around my arm, just a very rough mask. I'll do a high feather, so I'll press M, make sure to key the mask path, and then I will I cover over this blood effect. And I am doing it in subtract mode, so I'm actually gonna set that. So that way it only shows the blood effect under the arm. And then I'll just press F. So I have on about a 20 pixel feather. And then, then at the same time, I'm gonna add a little bit of a darker spot that kind of matches onto the outfit. So I'll grab the blood effect around here, I'll duplicate it, and then I'll hit uh, time freeze frame. And then I will remove the mask that I have, I'll remove all of the keyframes that I have. I will rotate it a bit. And then I'll press G and just do a tiny little mask. And then I will feather that mask and making sure that I'm consistent with the spot. I'm going to have it where the center of the thing is right kind of in this little gap right here. And then this should extend to this button that should help me track it. Uh, let me do that to the edge of this button right here. That way I know that it should line up like that. Uh, so same kind of tracking mask as before, or tracking, masking tracking trick as before. And it's kind of right on this seam right about here. So we'll see the final effect. Getting hit. So the main trick for this is finding the right place to uh, transition between your muzzle flash being facing front on 
and between your muzzle flash being from the side. So probably about right here is where I transition between the two. And then what I like to do is for the first muzzle flash that's kind of the sideways that suddenly switches between the two different ones, I like to kind of push it inwards a little bit so it's a little bit wider. And then sometimes I will even take kind of one of the original effects and kind of put it on a little bit like this. So you kind of have the two different effects playing at the same time. And then you just switch over like you do the uh, the other muzzle flash regularly. So this kind of middle frame where you have the kind of two layers over top just helps blend these different muzzle flashes so it kind of gives this 45 degree angle type flare um, which just helps blend this transition over here. And then I would go through and lower the opacity of the smoke and do all that kind of stuff and tracking which we covered in the last episode. So then, um, and over the shoulder. So that's kind of what it'd look like. And then what I'll do is, uh, I like to copy the initial layer that's underneath. I move it over to the top, and then I just do a mask around the edge of the gun, or like any other like bits of shoulder or things like that that are in the way. The muzzle flash. So I'll kind of do a mask like this around my hand. And then I'll just kind of fade it off about here. And then I'll press M. And I'll just make sure this is very roughly lined up with my gun. It doesn't have to be a perfect mask. But we'll press F on this mask and we'll boost this up a whole bunch. Actually do it where you can see the gun effect. I want this a lot. And then I'm going to actually open this up and go to mask expansion. I'm gonna have it expand inwards just a bit. We'll get this kind of look. Hand over the shoulder! So then let's go ahead and move on to core and talk a few things there. Um, to use the suppressed uh, fire muzzle flash, uh, even for bigger rifles that don't have a suppressor, and then you give them the normal sound. That technically gives it a slightly more accurate feel. The really big, expansive muzzle flashes. Uh, can look a little weird if you use them all the time, so adding some variety of like this kind of more of a smaller flash, it kind of gives the gun a different feel and it can help add some more diversity to your different shots. I'm just going to show when it comes to over the shoulder stuff what it looks like to just see the actual shoulders. It can kind of be fun to see what that looks like and kind of really shows you the process of what's actually going on there. And kind of a couple of things on tracers. This shot in particular, I have shown this one a lot. It was worth a shot. So to kind of give the impression that there's a ton of different tracers uh, and bullets flying from kind of this direction and I'm imagining there's kind of a line of them kind of about here, and it's kind of a line of them firing way back in the distance. Um, and so there's kind of tracers coming where they start from like over here and then stretch out here, or they kind of start from over here and stretch upwards like that. Um, so you kind of get some closer in ones and lots of layers, and that just feels kind of like there's a big fire going on. And I find tracers Keeping them minimal is usually better. Too many tracers does not look great. Uh, so what I like to do is, like I only did tracers on these first like couple of shots where they're initially running away. One of the reasons that I do that um, is somewhat from a, it's easier to only have a couple tracers, uh, but it's also um, that way you don't feel like plot armor of your characters where they're like getting shot at by tons and tons of tons of bullets and none of them are hitting your characters. One thing I did here that's pretty cool, uh, if you have some kind of armor or something like that, especially when it's sci-fi and it's kind of more of like a metal armor, uh, adding in a sparks effect 
hitting off of the armor. Uh, just kind of feels like, oh, well, the bullet's been hit a couple of times without being lethal or anything like that. Hitting into armor is kind of a nice thing. Uh, and then just having a few more tracers fly by. But those are about the only two shots in the scene that I actually really have tracers in. And then the rest of them, I just do the sound effect without the actual showing the tracer. And it kind of gives the implication that there's a whole lot more going on than you actually see. And then last little bit, let's cover some lasers and nighttime stuff. So we technically didn't shoot this actually at nighttime. This is kind of more of a twilight timing. However, in the actual film, it's supposed to be nighttime. The main thing is that it makes it easier on lighting, shooting at kind of twilight instead of actually having to have a big rig and generator and all of that stuff. Uh, so with this shot, um, to give the extra feel of darkness, I uh, instead of just doing the natural flash glow that I have, I actually added in a adjustment layer. So I did a mask. As you can see, I actually did uh, two separate adjustment layers, uh, but just generally masked out all of the highlights on the shoulder here, kind of on the ground here, on the legs, around the body. And then I went in on each of those masks and I uh, changed their opacity depending on how close it was. So this tree area and um, this tree has less opacity than these other masks over here because it gets less direct light. Um, and then I tinted it blue because these lasers are blue. And I did the exact same method to get this tracer as I did for the other tracers with lasers. I just change it to a blue color uh, instead of a kind of orangey color. And then I make them a bit slower. They move a lot slower in the frame, so the animations um, takes more frames where it's in frame. So it kind of gives that like more Star Wars kind of laser-esque feel where it feels like it's moving slower, even though that doesn't necessarily make sense from a physics standpoint. Uh, it looks kind of cool uh, when lasers are slower. And then to get this burn mark on the back of this guy's chest that I had here, I used a... Um, um, so I basically got a um, saber effect. I did like this weird twisty, turny kind of mask, something like that. Uh, and then on the saber, you can go down here to customize core and you can press layer masks. So if there's a mask on your frame, the, the saber will match to your mask instead of just the line. Uh, so it has this weird twisty shape. Um, and that just kind of gives, and I set it to warm, kind of a red color. And then I got a burn texture underneath uh, that just kind of makes it look like this dark thing. And then I put on motion blur. And that just kind of gives this feel of like a laser ripped right through and the skin is glowing hot red. And then I made the laser, um, the saber slowly shrink in size and then lower it in opacity so it kind of feels like it cools off and then it's just the burn mark left over afterwards. And I did a mask around my tracer, so just a tip of the tracer is coming through here and then it's coming up this way. Uh, so it kind of looks like it's going through him and then in the next shot it's all the way through. And that just gives this nice kind of, uh, tracer feels like it goes right through the guy. And then on these shots, you don't actually directly see the muzzle flashes, and I find at nighttime this is a nice trick. You don't actually need to show the muzzle flash, you just need to uh, do an adjustment layer, increase the brightness, increase the temperature. If you're doing the lasers and want the blue color, you can decrease it or colorize it however you want. Uh, but otherwise, for regular flashes, I like to make it a little warmer. Uh, so you kind of get this warm glow on all the areas it would hit. I do one big mask that's lower opacity and then lots of smaller ones around the high highlights where the light would hit the brightest. Um, and it just kind of takes a sense of like thinking about where your light is and where it's moving. Um, so this shot, you don't actually see the muzzle flashes, but with the sounds and the light sources, you kind of feel this little extra pop of light. Um, and overall, adding in these extra uh, brighten sources helps a lot, making your scene feel darker because the muzzle flashes have more impact on your lighting of your scene. Hopefully you could take a lot of these concepts and apply them in new creative ways. This should just be a good 
basis is kind of what I do for gun effects. Um, there's lots of different ways to actually go about doing them, but I find that just having, uh, being able to see my process, maybe you learn something interesting and got some cool inspiration for your own films. Anyhow, hopefully you have some good shooting, both with guns and with cameras.